Hey everybody, RC here, back with another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks. Now, the show here is for all of you guys who are looking for tips, tricks, techniques, inspiration, anything to get you out there and take your pictures out to the next level. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about some stuff over here and it's all based kind of on studio photography, but before we do, this is the deal, right? You're gonna to need to take a picture of somebody and at one point or another, that somebody might come of different sizes or you might need them to sit. Now, in the studio, what they do is they work with something called Apple Boxes. Now, let's have Brad talk to us a little bit about what an Apple Box is and why you should care. Hi everyone, Brad Moore here with another Grip Tip for Detailing TV. Today we're gonna to talk about Apple Boxes. These that you see here are made by Matthews, but there are a number of companies that make them. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. This one is a full, which talks about the height of it. This one's a half, because obviously it's half the size. They even go down to quarters and eighths, so if you need you know, just little increments, you can use those. Then they also come in regular, which this is a 20 inch wide. Then they come in minis, which are half, obviously 10 inches wide. Uh, these things are studio staples. If you go to a photography studio, they're gonna have multiple, uh, multiples of these just lying around. Um, and they use them for, if you're a photographer and you need to get up higher, if you don't have a ladder or whatever, you can you know, stick three of these together and kind of do a stair step thing. If you have a subject that you need to make taller, you can use these at different heights. So like if you have a, a CEO and a vice president that you're photographing and the CEO has a little height difference, you can you stick them on a map box and raise him or her right up and make them even out. Uh, you can use it as a product shooting surface. If you like the grain of the wood, you know, the, you can stick a product right on it, shoot that. You can put paper over it. If you need different colors of paper, you can stick that over it. And then even if you need to raise up a prop or a table or anything like that. So they've got all sorts of uses and probably even more than I have mentioned here. And they're not that expensive. They range from about $25 to $35. So you head over to B&H, pick these right up. That's it for Grip Tips this week, thanks. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bienvenue à Paris. Poulet, pommes fruits et jambon. La donne, la terre, la pillée. Je suis fatigué. Vous voulez manger la fromage. La voiture. Elle pour rapide, cloque Mathieu. Monsieur Beaujolais, avec fâche. Je suis fatigué. Vraiment, j'ai la fromage. La voiture est pour la rapide, cloque Mathieu. L'addition, s'il vous plaît. Au revoir. La fromage. Welcome back everybody to Photography Tips and Tricks RC here. Now, if you liked all of the stuff that Brad was talking about on Apple Boxes, the tips that we share here on the show, all of this stuff is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week at kelbytraining.com. This is a resource that has a phenomenal amount of instructors talking about everything to do with Photoshop, photography, lighting. It's the one-stop shop to take your images to the next level. Make sure that you take a look at kelbytraining.com. Now, I have a tip for you um, studio photography, and I kind of want to augment some of the stuff that Brad was talking about. So Brad talked to us about Apple boxes and you know setting a person and why you would use different sizes and the sizes that are available. But now that's on that side. Let's focus on a little bit on this side. This is something that I see all the time that photographers do. You want to make a really, really good picture of the person that's in front of you. Chances are that picture is not going to come out really, really good if this is what they see. Right? This is a very intimidating thing to do, right? The person that's out there on the opposite side could feel very, very weird. It's a very off-putting thing. I always tell people, having a camera aimed at you for someone who's not very comfortable with it, you may as well aim a gun. It's a very, very off-putting experience. So this is what I do. I have my tripod set up, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll just kind of frame my shot, get it exactly where I need it, 
Once it's all set, lock it down, lock it down, and I'll get to go. And I use my cable release. Now, once I have my cable release set up, I don't make a big deal out of this, and I set this down, and I put it right here. My camera's generally within eyesight view. At this point, everything that I need to do is right here on this cable release. I can focus now on talking to the client. I can focus on talking to the person and making sure that I get the expression that I want. And in the middle of all of that, I'm plugging away through it. So I can say, smile, yep, that looks really, really good. That looks really, really good. This becomes secondary in the conversation. All we're doing right now is focusing on a relationship between you and me. This just happens to be here. And what you'll notice is that when you do that, the images that you're going to get are gonna be a lot warmer and a lot more genuine. Now, if your client starts moving around a lot, you might wanna make sure that you kinda of zoom out a little bit so that you have a little bit of wiggle room. But the key here is set yourself down, get yourself in one spot. If you wanna make that moment, make this the third part of the conversation, not the first part of the conversation. Now, we also have a tip from Ms. Tamar Lackey, and this is on broadening your settling techniques and pleasing your clients. Take a look at this. Hey everybody, welcome to D-Town TV. I am here on the set with Tamara Lackey, uh, portrait photographer, author, sh uh, host of Redefine. Yes. And many, many other things. Yes. Um, wanted to talk a little bit, but we had you on the show before to talk about some tips about, you know, out there shooting. You've got a, a really good business tip that we talked about. It's, I guess it's part shooting, Part business. You do it while you're shooting, but you also, the whole purpose behind it is kind of business related. Sure, yeah. So one of the things I think when you're photographing portraits is to recognize that um, if you want to sell these portraits, mm -hmm. which I always want to sell yes. my portraits. Um, I don't like to sell them. <laughs> that money thing. I actually we don't do. Need it. I do like the money part. <laughs> um, is to think about the fact that if you're going to be photographing a person or a group, um, I don't know anybody who's all like one person. You know, they're, they're usually, they're happy, I'm they're sad, people. they're frustrated. You're like, I'm at least I've seen 40 of you this morning. Um, <laughs> and that's only in two hours. That's true. It's like four days. <laughs> um, but usually there's a whole spectrum of expressions you can get yeah. out of a person or a family or the way they relate to each other. And so one of the things I uh, strive for is to show a lot of variety in a shoot. So one regular shoot would produce images that show um, laughter and, you know, seriousness mm -hmm. and interaction and, um, giggles and anger and seriously like all of it um, and then showcasing it in a way that um, to be able to enhance the variety we're using different locations different backdrops um, different clothing I'm shooting close up I'm shooting medium I'm shooting far I'm shooting atmospheric where my family's a dot on a giant hill okay and I'm making a point of you utilizing Pulling the sun into it or yeah you know. yeah and utilizing a lot of different post-processing styles um, so that when all is said and done if I'm turning around 40 to 60 images from a session, uh, there is so much variety there that it's not a matter of I'm going to choose between one of these and walk away with three or four photographs. Mm -hmm. There's just like these are all so different and they all can serve as art in different ways. These gotcha. would go great together in this album. This would be great on the wall. This would be great in port, you know, on the desk, etc. Um, and so, with the intention of that going the whole way through, is is to sell more and also please the client more. Yeah, to not just sell. Two yeah, or three and and to, and to increase referrals and everything. So, so for somebody that might. I guess just to be starting out in, in something like this. Do you have, I, I hate to use the word formula, but you know, do you have like three or four things that you would say, you know, when you go out there, do this and, and, and you'll have variety at the end of the day? Uh. You know, I, I, and I'm not just responding to the word formula in a negative way, although I am. I, <laughs> um, I, guidelines. I actually, guidelines. Guidelines. Well, I, I do try to keep in mind that um, I invest so much in my lenses, I might as well freaking use them, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and that obviously changes the look and feel of my images dramatically. And so I'll throw on my ultra wide and I'll have my, you know, 85 portrait and I'll step back and um, my 35 one four stepping close. And right there, I've already just changed up the look and feel quite yeah. a lot. Um, and then the, the other thing I think about is, uh, am I showing the environment and am I showing how my subject's connected to the environment and the reason I chose this spot for the shoot? And that, that also forces me to think about stepping back. Okay. Because I think it's really common when you're just starting out, one of the most common portraits you see is the extreme close-up. 
because people are so transfixed that they can yeah. do this and it's beautiful like yeah. I still shoot those often and I love those but to realize that if you're giving your client 40 images of just close up there's not a whole lot to choose from and there's not a whole lot to buy it's a really good point because yeah. I mean it's you know, you're probably going to pick your favorite one or two. Yeah, and that's, like that's she's great like it. this and like this. <laughs> you know? How many more can you have? Yeah. Yeah, that was a great, that's a great point. Like you said, you, you were, you know, you had some close up, some half, some full body. Yeah. And then some just in the environment in general. Right. And I think just, the, you know, the guidelines are to think about using multiple lenses and, you know, show the relationship to the environment. That alone will remind you to do a lot of different looks and feels um, and to just keep moving. I mean, if you're photographing children, you're already doing that. Yeah. You know? Just get out there and yeah. follow them around. Yeah. And that's, you know, I, I, I've, I've done it too. It's some of my favorite photos is just following them, following yes. the kids around. Tracking them, Wherever tracking your go. prey. Yeah, you said, so, you know, following the kids around. And I, yes. I, I thought that was a great point because that will change up your environment. Yes. You know, you may point your lens, you're following them and you point your lens at the sun. Right. Now you got sun flare that sometimes may be their favorite photo and you mm -hmm. didn't even really. Because you forgot your lens hood. Planned it. Yeah, exactly. Right. But now you're artistic. It is. It's art. Yes. Turn it to black and white and we call it fine art. <laughs> I didn't exactly. say that. <laughs> All right. Tamara, <clears throat> Matt. let's bring this back around. Where can people find out more about you? Uh, I have a website. Do you? Yes, I call it TamaraLackey.com. <laughs> you know, I've always thought your creativity was <laughs> just one of the things that I always liked the most about you. So. Thank you. That's good. And all your Thank Twitter you. and your Facebook pages are all on there. So Yes, Facebook is Tamara Lackey Photography. But Instagram, Twitter, Google+, Plus, that's all just Tamara Lackey. Cool. And you got some books out there? I do. Uh, Envisioning Family, which is my latest. Cool. That's um, over at Peach Pit. Peach Pit, yep. Art of Children's Portrait Photography is the first one I did. All the proceeds for that go to children's charities, which awesome. is great. Cool. Um, and uh, capturing life through better photography. And uh, you also have a show, Redefine? Redefine, redefineshow.com. Sweet. I, again, with the original naming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the original Tamerlacki. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. I'm sure we'll have you on again very soon. Like in seconds. Like in, in just a minute here. But thanks again, and we'll uh, I'll talk to you again as soon as the camera stops. <laughs>
and just leave us a comment. Give us an idea. This is your show. So whatever it is that you want to see, it's fair game. Just let us know. One of you guys is going to win a copy of Life Finder, the DVD from Mr. Jeremy Coward himself. So this is an instructional look at the world of photographer Jeremy Coward. So if you want to know a little bit behind the man, behind her portrait, this is going to be a great tool for you. And one of you guys is going to be able to win it. So guys, make sure you take a look at the Hell Portrait website. Make sure that you tune back next week for another Photography Tips and Tricks.